Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Mondays with Monday, and that's me, Jim Mundy, the historian for the Union League Legacy Foundation. And as you can see, once again, we're back in the Broad Street hallway, in the Broad Street building. It opened in May of 1865, and the hallway behind me is all about the Civil War. And that, of course, leads to Lucretia Mott, whose portrait I am standing next to. It is the newest painting in the collection. It was unveiled and dedicated, if you will, on December 27th of last year on the 160th anniversary of the founding of the Union League. And how appropriate for all of that. But why Lucretia Mott? Well, th there's a very good reason. That's because in the 19th century, Lucretia Mott was instrumental in promoting civil rights, civil rights rights, if you will, for both African Americans in Philadelphia and also for women at the same time. But specifically, her involvement with Camp William Penn and her family's involvement with that. Because that, those are other stories you may have heard if you watch previous episodes of this series on Mondays with Monday. So, so here we go, all right. Uh, Lucretia Mott's born in 1793 in Nantucket, Massachusetts, a very devoutly religious Quaker family. Uh, she would eventually become a Quaker preacher, believe it or not. Uh, but she was also a teacher, and she taught at a Quaker school in Dutchess County, New York, called Nine Partners, where she would meet her future husband, James Mott. Now, when she was teaching there, she discovered, uh, surprisingly, that women didn't get paid nearly as much as men. And so that was her first indication that the world was not created equal, and she would fight that inequality for the rest of her life. So her family, that is her parents and her siblings, would move to Philadelphia and Lucretia and her future husband James would come with them and they would eventually get married here in Philadelphia where they would raise their family of six children. Now, Lucretia, all right, 1833, her husband James becomes one of the co-founders of the American Anti-Slavery Society. In 1833, she and other white and black women of Philadelphia found the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. So you can see the path that she and her husband are taking at this point in time. And in 1840, she will become an American delegate to the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London. But even there, she would be reminded that women were not equal because the women initially were excluded. Entrance into the convention hall, which they finally got to attend, but they were segregated in a completely different section at the same time. So. Eight years later, working with Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucretia Mott would become one of the two creators, if you will, of the, what became known as the Seneca Falls Convention, which is all about establishing equal rights for women in this country. So that's 1848. So the Civil War begins in April of 1861. And in June of 1863, the Union League receives permission from the federal government to raise United States colored troops. That is, this is the first attempt by the federal government to allow black men to fight on behalf of their country and to fight for their citizenship. And these USCT regiments, of which there were 11 eventually, needed a training camp. And so at this point, Lucretia Mott and her husband, James, live on a farm in Montgomery County in Chelt what is now Cheltenham Township. Uh, the farm is called Roadside. And the Motts and their son-in-law, Eridan Davis, leased part of their collective farmland to be used as Camp William Penn, the first and largest training camp for black soldiers in American military history up to that point. So Lucretia is actively engaged in helping black men fight. So Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's over on the 3rd. Three days later in Philadelphia, Frederick Douglass, the greatest abolitionist in the 19th century, who had already spoken twice at the Union League of Philadelphia, which is just about now six months old, all right, is the main speaker at a mass rally here in Philadelphia, held on July the 6th in National Hall that was located on Market Street between 12th and 13th. And what made this rally unique is that it was the, really the, the largest and primarily the first time that not only were black men and white men together in the same uh, space, but also black and white women at the same time. And this, and this meeting, this mass meeting on July the 6th, which featured Frederick Douglass, was all about uh, raising black regiments to fight in the, in the Union Army. And Lucretia Mott, while I don't believe she was on the stage at that meeting, was certainly part of and spiritually with the sentiment at that meeting itself. And after all, at this point, Camp William Penn was already fully operational by July the 4th, just two days earlier. So she's clearly involved in the spirit of Camp William Penn and Frederick Douglass and what the Union League was trying to achieve. So um, 
if you look over my right shoulder, you'll see the left-hand wall. And if you've watched previous episodes, you've seen me talk about this. At the far end of the wall, we have a portrait of Frederick Douglass that was unveiled in September of the year before, of 2021. In the middle, a Civil War painting called Harvest Home and the War Was Over. That will be moved to a different part of the League House. And then the painting closest to us, Three Medals of Honor by Don Troiani, which is the, depicts the 6th United States Color Troop Regiment in battle on September 29th of 1864, Battle of Newmarket Heights. That painting will then shift to the middle, and Lucretia Mott's portrait will then be hung in its place. So from left to right, you'll have Lucretia Mott, Three Medals of Honor, and Frederick Douglass. You can see how those historical dots connect, which is, I mean, we couldn't have planned it any better. So, interestingly enough though, now that we've added these portraits to the, these paintings to the collection. How did we come about selecting Lucretia Mott? Well, there is the Union League Legacy Foundation, which is the steward of the League's cultural collections, that is, art, archives, and library. And through that foundation, we have commissioned a number of paintings recently, Frederick Douglass, as we just mentioned, and now Lucretia Mott. But what's the process by which this happens? So you have the Legacy Foundation at the top of the pyramid, then you have the Historical Preservation Committee underneath that, and within the Historic Preservation Committee is something called the Collections Committee, which clearly then is the internal steward for these collections, including the art collection. And so when it is decided to commission a painting, the Collections Committee then creates an ad hoc subcommittee. Uh, composed of the chairman of the collections committee with two or three other selected members of that committee and the foundation staff then does its homework. We look for who we think are some of the best portrait artists working in America today, but on the East Coast obviously for logistical reasons. We put together a list of roughly eight to ten artists. We collect different examples of their work and we then share all of them with this ad hoc committee. They will then go through these different artists and their work, and they will narrow it down to three, and then they will vote and pick one. And that's what happened in this case. So the artist of Lucretia is a young man from Portland, Maine, and his name is Joshua LaRock, and he won the commission, among all the others, for the pleasure, and I would like to think the honor, of painting Lucretia Mott that we can now add to our wonderful and incredible art collection, specifically, geez, connecting those abolitionist dots here in the main hallway in the Broad Street building. So that's, how, that's why Lucretia's here and it's how she got to be here. So I hope that all makes sense. And I hope you've been at least gotten something out of this episode. Now, uh, we could talk for hours about Lucretia Mott. We're not going to do that, although we know although I can talk. So I hope that this little brief introduction to Lucretia Mott and why she's here at the Union League makes a little bit more sense, especially when you connect the dots with Frederick Douglass and that great uh, mass meeting on July the 6th of 1863 here in Philadelphia, sponsored by the Union League and its members. All right, so thank you for watching once again. I hope you tune in in two weeks for a new episode of Mondays with Monday. And in the meantime, thank you, stay well, and take care, everybody. Goodbye now.